What is going on guys? Grave here today. I'd like to talk about update 4.1.0 for Battlefield 2042. Now this update will be out at some point this week. DICE does not give us an exact date yet, but they did give us the patch notes. I will link these down in the description if you would like to read over them for yourself. This is update 4.1.0, which is their first major update of season 4, 11th hour. Uh, there's going to be a few things kind of what they're going to do, they're going to be bringing some new vault weapons, changing how the armor plate works, chat improvements, and so on. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. They talked about a new event. A special division has begun to stir. The Leviathan awakes. This next mid-season event is just around the corner. And you can expect brand new theme cosmetics to earn alongside the ability to jump into a new mode that will task you getting up close and personal with the enemy. But for now, one question remains. Will you be able to shut down the Leviathan in time? And it says stay tuned for more details. Also, they talked about new vault weapons. The AEK-971 will be out uh, with this new update. So this fully automatic firing weapon has a 30 round capacity with a low spread and decent recoil. If you're a fan of utilizing burst fire modes on your weapon, optics uh, suggested for staying on target. Also, the RPK-74 uh, M. Uh, feeding from the magazine instead of a belt affords this LMG the fastest reload speed of its class at the cost of magazine capacity. So that was another good weapon from some past Battlefield games. And last but not least, the MP44 or 443, excuse me. This short recoil high impact mobility sidearm was standard issue for a long time. But don't let its age or size fool you. This quick firing weapon means business. Also, the IBA armor plate overhaul. This update, they're going to overhaul the perfect, uh, protective benefits of the armor plates. Armor plate protection benefits will now only apply to those torso areas of your character and no longer provide protection for the entire character, which to me is what it should have done from kind of from the get-go. I'm glad they're finally changing this. This means any enemy hit, uh, anyone that you hit, in the torso will have their armor plates applied will result in a deduction to the player's armor first and once depleted damage will follow through the character's health. The function of the armor plate outside remains unchanged including explosives and damage to armor. With this overhaul they're responding to player feedback that armor plates are kind of too effective and we're making steps to allow you to counter that gadget by providing a skill enhancement to gameplay encouraging you to prioritize your shots in order to earn faster takedown so i'm glad that they have kind of done a rework there i think that'll be a good thing the community had been wanting that for a while so i'm really glad dice went ahead and did that uh, chat improvements they added a new and improved design which leads to a less cluttered experience other improvements included but not limited to background uh, and allowing for text remain strong while lowering the uh, opacity of the background also color formatting changes resulting in handles being uh, color coded and white text for chat dialogue also for general and gameplay improvements as intended above the iba armor plates will now exclusively provide protection to the chest area of your specialist your limbs and head area will now remain unprotected they also increase the xp earned and feedback when destroying an eod bot you now earn objective fortified XP for placing gadgets such as ammo crates, claymore mines, etc. in a friendly objective area, which I think is a good idea. Also, you now earn objective XP, uh, revive XP when reviving a teammate inside an objective area. They resolved an animation issue that would break while crawling in prone with a throwable gadget in your hand. They also fixed an issue that prevented grenades from being able to be thrown through a window on renewal at E2. And they fixed an issue that would cause inconsistent melee damage to occur when dragging the mouse in any direction just before the hit occur. Or occurred, excuse me. Meleeing an enemy who is on a ladder will now deal the same damage as the standard melee attack, which is 50 damage. They reduced the traversal sprint delay when uh, barging through doors. You will now be able to barge through doors uh, while sliding, also they fixed an issue that would cause traversal sprint to become broken upon quick, quickly exiting a vehicle. And I've had that problem a lot, where I would get out of the vehicle, try to start to run, and traversal sprint would not work. Your weapon would not come up, and you're pretty much just walking at a quick pace and not running. They fixed an issue that would sometimes result in sliding to gain uh, a lot of acceleration that it shouldn't. They fixed an issue that caused a small amount of unwanted camera shake after performing a low vault. 
smoothed out the animation of vaulting to reduce the popping sensation that occurs kind of at the end and they improved the animation of the recoilless m5 and the g85 tgm and the default weapon for the engineer has been moved from the dm7 towards the lcmg to appropriately synergize with the weapon's proficiencies in order for this change to take place any engineer that had a dm7 equipped will find their loadout has changed to the lcmg also, the specialist mastery improvements. They adjusted Sundance's mastery requirement from 30 to 20 kills in assist with smart explosives. Crawford's mastery requirements from 50 to 30 kills in assist with the mounted Vulcan. Zane's mastery require, uh, requirements from 50 to 30 kills in assist with the XM3070A. Also, they updated Liz's mastery requirements from 10 vehicles destroyed with the G84 TGM to 10 kills when destroying vehicles with the G. 84 TGM. They uploaded Dozer's Mastery from 20 kills with the Ballistic Shield to 40 close distance kills to allow for more variety play style with Dozer but still making sure he gets up close and personal. They also added some or changed some audio things. HDR audio overhaul to create higher dynamic range in the mix. They've made some gearbox tweaks to the RAM to minimize a shifting going up hills. This will help while repeating uh, while that audio is kind of being heard also they fixed an issue where buzzing sound could be heard after using a sniper scope the repair tool should now be more audible uh, kind of while it's in the mv38 condor they fixed an issue where the javelin's projectile sound does not trigger when it comes to gadgets they updated the tutorial video for the javelin they updated the emp grenade description tool tips have been added for the defibrillator, the melee weapons from Battlefield 2042 will now be listed within the portal. Smoke grenades now exclude underwater. Um, also, they fixed an issue that caused the BF3 Soflam not to be accessible after being deployed. Friendly claymores are now displayed on the minimap, which I think is a great thing. Cause sometimes you would see a claymore run right up on one, not knowing it's a friendly until you got right up on it. So that is definitely a good thing. The repair tool animation will no longer persist when switching to another gadget. The Claymore sensor can no longer be triggered by enemies under it, its radius and the M18 Claymore icons now flash while looking at them. In some cases, players were able to pick up the Claymores through solid objects. This should no longer happen and players are now notified via the correct icon while the Ranger is hacked or under the effect of EMP and they temporarily disable the ability to defuse uh, rush MCOM stations with the EOD bot. This functionality will be re-enabled in a future update. When it comes to specialist, Angel does it again, has his loadout crate, can't be called in on top of vehicles. Angel's loadout crate can no longer be placed on bushes. Try doing that one again. Uh, kind of just to be funny with those, but those are two things that were kind of goofy in my opinion, and those have been fixed. Also, they fixed an issue with Blasco that the X6 device did not show up in a restriction section of the portal builder. And they fixed an issue that would cause Blasco to use misleading voice lines when pinging a threat. And the radius of the X6 device should now display correctly while the big map is open. Uh, Casper's OPV recon drone now deals damage to Claymore, C5, uh, anti-tank grenades, and proximity sensors. And the drone can now EMP the deployable spawn beacons uh, from the EBLC RAM. Dozer, the damage numbers will now take Dozer's 50% damage reduction against explosives into account, into account. It's also no longer possible to heal the Ranger by the S221 pistol with flak. Irish, the Irish APS-36 shoot-down sentinel now intercepts the Ghostmaker R10 explosive bolt and improve the consistency of the interaction portion of the DC-2 deployable cover. And for Zane, the XM-3070A range counter should no longer become stuck at zero while in a vehicle. For weapons, they fixed issues that caused the wrong icon to appear in the portal for the AC-9. Uh, also, they fixed an issue where drop weapons would be difficult to pick up after a player died while prone. And they fixed an issue where the MTAR-21 briefly clips the camera when aiming down sights and crouch after switching from a smoke grenade launcher. The AN-91 no longer has the incorrect sprint settings applied they fixed issues that would cause flickering dot to be visible on the ac9 cobra site and they fixed an issue where scopes were disabled after other distortion effects even when not adsing 
Shooting with the RM68 will now display you on the mini map when using non-suppressed barrels. That was something that was going on. You could use a non-suppressed barrel on the RM68 and you were still showing, not showing up like you're using one of the suppressors. Uh, they improved the consistency of the VCAR weapon icon and intended magazine size of 30 bullets is now shown for AC9's subsonic in the collection tab. And sniper rifles now have a dispersion penalty while moving. Uh, they fixed an issue that would cause open seat blast damage to certain uh, certain players in vehicles to be improperly applied. Grenades that have already detonated, such as incendiary and smoke, are no longer intercepted by vehicles. A MPS systems. Uh, the CAV brawler specifically, players' legs should no longer stick out of the vehicle, and gadgets can no longer be deployed under the CAV brawler. And that's pretty much it for this update, guys. There's a lot of bug fixes, a lot of small fixes. But that's a good thing to me because it shows DICE is still really working on the game. It shows EA is still interested in, you know, them working on the game. There's a lot of players getting back into the game like I've talked about in past videos. So this should be good for future updates. I'm kind of curious to see about weapon balance going forward. I know a lot of people think the RM68 is way too good and it is very, very good. Um, once you get a kind of your hands on it, it's one of the weapons that you see everyone using. So I'm kind of curious what they're going to do with all the weapons because there's some really good weapons in game. And I think there's a few that could use a few tweaks, uh, maybe to kind of even them, kind of even the playing field out. So everything is good. I, that's kind of the way I want it to where all weapons are very viable to use. But anyway, guys, let me comment with your thoughts. Let me know what you think about this update. And of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.